Hey fellow backyard warriors, Nick here. And tonight I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a string jig for continuous, also known as endless loop strings. Now you've probably seen my other video where I show how to make a continuous loop string using a basic jig made from a, uh, I believe it was a 2x2 two two that had nails in it. Now this type of jig is a little different. One of the benefits to it is that instead of using nails that the string attaches to, one side actually has a pivot that allows you to use it normally like you would with the nails. But when you're ready to serve the actual loops, you can pivot it, and the pivot will allow you to work on the loop of the string. So it's really simple and easy to work with. You know, you don't have to you know, really move things around and you don't have to get in there. And it also can result in a cleaner string. It's a little easier to learn on. So I'm going to be showing you how to build one. Now this is often referred to as a one-arm jig just because it only has one pivot. The other side is fixed. I prefer that. It's a little simpler, a little easier to make. There are less moving parts, and I like that. But if you wanted to, you could make a two-arm style where both arms pivot. It's really easy to do. All you need to do is make, instead of making an end piece, you just make two of these pivot arms. Now, this is not my design. There are a lot of guys who make similar ones, and this is just sort of how I like doing them. But... You know, it's a really popular design. It works really well. It's really adjustable. So the first thing you're going to need is one of these. Now this is a steel strut channel. It's used a lot for housing cables and buildings. And you could usually find this in any hardware store. You just need to look in the electrical section next to the electrical conduit. So this is about an inch and a half by an inch and a half square, or it's a square that's sort of a tube with one open end. When you're looking for this, you want to make sure that this open end has sort of a lip to it. This lip is actually what's going to make this whole thing work. So once you've got that, you're going to need some 2 by 4 now this, which is going to be the pivot arm, you want this to be 18 inches long. If you're going to be making two pivot ends, then you're going to need two of these. And I'll explain all the markings and things later. If you're making the one arm jig, like this, then you're also going to need a 12 inch piece of 2x4, which will become the end piece. You're also going to need a three-quarter inch dowel, and you're going to want to cut them into six-inch sections, and I'll explain this a little bit later. But these are going to become the posts that you actually attach the string to, and they'll give you clearance so you can use a serving jig without really having to move the strings around, and it gives you a good amount of clearance. Now, the main bit of cutting and shaping you're going to need to do is you'll want to make two pieces like this. These are half an inch plywood. You could also use hardwoods for this. But basically, you want to make them about an inch and three eighths wide. The reason why you want to do that is so when you take your steel strut, it will actually fit in and slide freely inside. And that's what's going to make this whole thing work. So once you've got all those pieces, you're going to need a 3 inch long, half an inch bolt. You're also going to need half an inch washer, a lock washer, and I like to use the wing nut because it allows you to do 
easy hand adjustments, but you could also use just a hex nut. You're also going to need three two inch long number 10 screws. These are wood screws and if you see this upper portion has no thread. This will, we're actually going to be using this for the string to rest on and the threads would actually kind of chew the string up a little bit. So you're going to need three of these. You're also going to need three, I believe they are one and a quarter inch number six screws. And these are going to be used to attach the tailpiece to your jig. So now that we have everything, let's get started putting it together. The first thing we're going to work on are the arms that actually give you a good amount of clearance when serving your string. Now there are three of these. If you're making a two-arm jig, then you're going to need four of these. The first thing, if you notice, I've actually gone ahead and wrapped all of these for about an inch to an inch and a half. What this is going to do is reinforce this because we're going to be driving these screws into the end here. The screws are actually what are going to hold the string while you're working with it. So this is going to be under a lot of strain and especially when you first start screwing this it's going to have the tendency to want to split. If you wrap it with a strong cord or a wire it will hold this together. So once you've wrapped it what you want to do is drill a hole right down the middle and you want the hole to be as deep as your threads are long on your screw. So if you could see this is how far down the hole is. So once you've drilled your hole what you do is you take your screw and you should be able to do this you know, just with the screwdriver. And there it is. So here's one of the arms of the jig. So you just want to repeat this for the other two. So I'm going to do that and then we'll move on to the next step. 